if you need to do a shit in between sets, my recommendation when you come back from your shitting is to do another one or two warm-up sets depending on how long that shit took you. But don't come straight back into the top sets after a shit. When it comes to getting stronger, building more muscle, a tight bench is always going to be superior. But when it comes to likes on the gram, sometimes a bouncy bench is what it takes. Three grams wasn't my prescription. Um, that was just the fellow Adam who posted it and uh, shared it on my story. I don't measure three grams specifically. I usually use one teaspoon per liter of water. I also make myself laugh. So I'm glad that I'm not the only one who finds me funny. There are a number of different ways that you can train to be good at powerlifting and not all of them will allow you to build that much muscle or look good, but I believe the way that I train does. There are so many external factors that will affect the way that you lift. Some people get affected more than others, but I absolutely believe that environment makes a huge difference to someone's success. There are so many different approaches to the way that you can train but in my opinion, the only thing that you should do is whatever makes you happy. Apart from sleep and you missed out food, which are the best and most obvious forms of recovery, the next best thing is planning your training so you're not beating yourself up every session. Well, this isn't medical advice, but my missus. <laughs> that chick trained about a week later. Um, but you know, she didn't try and beat herself up or set PBs and she didn't train through pain. I think that there are definitely a lot of benefits to training core, but I also think that you can strengthen your core through all of your main compound movements. Okay. I wasn't serious. I mean, it probably is the quickest way, but I don't recommend you do that. Steroids. The short answer for this is yes, it is possible, but it is definitely not optimal. One of the key drivers for muscle hypertrophy or muscle building is volume. So the only reason I'd take your approach is if I was short on time. If you're doing enough sets, then yes, six reps is definitely a great rep range for hypertrophy. There's a big difference between what I've done in the past and 200 kilograms. And I don't think that's happening in this lifetime especially now that I'm losing my body weight. I'd like to, but let's be real. Have you ever tasted your sweat before? Have you ever wondered why it tastes like salt? That's because your sweat contains electrolytes. One of them is sodium. So we need to replenish our sodium, especially when we work out. So I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that because I kind of rest every day. I go to sleep every night. But I train weights four days a week, so therefore three days a week I'm not training weights, so that could be considered more rest days, if that's what you're wondering. Yes, I recommend shin sleeves, even if your shins don't hurt when deadlifting. It's a preventative. Be proactive, not reactive. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I do think powerlifting can be done in a healthy way, even though at the highest level most of the best powerlifters in the world aren't really doing it in a healthy way and I think you should. I personally prefer flats but there are a lot of high level squatters that use elevated heels so it's a matter of preference. I kind of do have one big sleep at night but if I ever get an opportunity which hasn't been the case recently I do love a daytime nap so if I could I would but at the moment it hasn't happened in a while. You see, I'm not a motivator, so therefore I'm not the best person to ask for motivation advice. But what I can tell you is I'm not always motivated, but I still train anyway, because training is a non-negotiable for me, and it should be for you as well.